normal space, bam, span of the gradient vectors. But then what? How do you find the tangent space? Well, theory of orthogonal complements. You can do a straightforward linear algebra calculation to get that, right? The problem of actually finding curves which are on the manifold is more dicey, right? It was only possible for us to do this without a lot of work because these are relatively simple formulas. If these formulas get more complicated, this doesn't get much more complicated, but that does, right? Now, how about the flip side of this? Now, what was the example we looked at last class? By the way, you notice that there's not a normal line here. There's actually a normal volume. <laughs> yeah, what did we, what did I, what did I write down at the end of last class? What was it? It was... Yeah, I had, uh, what was it, x? How, what were the variables? It was theta phi pitchfork, right? And we had, oops, yeah, cosine theta, sine phi, sine pitchfork, cos, uh, sine theta, <coughs> sine phi, sine pitchfork, and then um, cosine phi, sine pitchfork, and then then cosine pitchfork. It's, it's four dimensional. Yeah, that, that's, that's what it should be. Now, I, I showed you guys that, in fact, if this is x, <laughs> y, z, and say w, in fact, uh, the equation that those solve is x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus w squared equals to 1. So there you go. I have both the parametric view of the three-sphere as well as the, the implicit view of the three-sphere, right? So if you want to find the tangent space at a point P of the three-sphere, what should you do? Versus if you want to find the normal space at P of the three-sphere, what should you do? Here's what you do. The normal space all right, it's very simple. It's just the span of what you do. We can call this thing f, right? So the normal space is what dimensional? The tangent space is what dimensional? The tangent space at p to r4 is the direct sum of these two things. All right, and remember this is the direct thing. So this is this is like the d, which is a subset of R three in terms of my original language today. So th this is a three dimensional manifold in R four. So the tangent space is three dimensional. How big is the normal space then? The normal space is is actually one dimensional. There's a normal line in this case, and so all you need is the span of the gradient of f at the point p. Now. Okay, I'm forgetting my, my, uh, my legalism here. So P, attach it at the point P, take the gradient of F, you feed in the point P, there you go. That's the normal space at the point P. What's the tangent space? How do you calculate that? Well, what you do, well, there are two ways to do it, right? One way, you could calculate the orthogonal complement to this, right? wouldn't be too hard, but there's a more direct way here since I have the parameterization. What it is, is you just do p comma partial x partial theta p comma partial x partial phi p comma partial x partial psi. Now the, the, the partial derivatives, where they should be, where should they be evaluated? To be, I mean, I'm being a little bit ambiguous here in this this thing. Which of these? These evaluated where? Let's say phi not. Uh, excuse me, theta not, phi not, uh, psi not, or pitchfork not. With what? X of those things, theta not, phi not 
sine i equal to what? Equal to the point P. So that, you know, what I'm trying to point out is you can actually calculate the tangent space directly, essentially, using the parameterization. If you just look at the partial derivatives of the, the param parameterizing functions, right? And on the other hand, the normal space is it's directly given to you from the gradient of the level function. But these are, these are dual, dual ideas. So the, the interesting problem we're going to solve with these next time is the problem of the, the problem of Lagrange multipliers. All right. So what's I, I hope I've I, I think I've shown you enough here that you can do calculations. I, I, I definitely have not fully communicated the theory. If you read my notes, there's there's more depth there. I'd like you to read uh, my notes on this stuff. Because I could, I could go through the proof in class here that these are tangent spaces, but, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're subspaces of the, you know, vector space, but I, I think the notes will suffice. So here's the problem of Lagrange multipliers. We're given, um, you know, some objective function. say f of x1 through xn, and constraints, say, g, um, g sub j of x1 through, to, through xn equals to, uh, you know, some constants. In, so your goal, right, is to maximize this objective function or minimize it subject to those constraints. So what I'll show you next time is there is a simple way to understand why the gradient of f and the gradient of g have to be related in terms of this decomposition of the total tangent space into the normal and the tangent space to the surface. I mean, the constraints will define some constraint manifold. And uh, it turns out that in order for this f to, to get an extreme value, the gradient of f has to be in the normal space to the manifold. But to be in the normal space to the manifold is just to say it's some kind of linear combination of the gradients of the g's. Which means you have to solve the equation gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g. Or if, if there's more than one constraint, gradient of f is equal to lambda 1 gradient of g1 plus lambda 2 gradient of g2 and so forth. So next time I'll show you how we can actually solve interesting um, maximization problems in, in arbitrary dimensions. We can answer questions like, given a sphere and given some other blob, what two points on the sphere and the blob are closest to each other? Search your heart, you will find you haven't solved this problem before. It just was outside our reach in calculus three. So, okay, that's not entirely fair. There's a geometric solution that doesn't use this, but <laughs> ignoring that. <laughs> so, thanks guys.